What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on some front suspension on the Helix. So last video, you can see we got the frame still hanging up here. We're letting this stuff harden up. It's been a few days. It is hardened up, but we're letting it fully cure. But what we got to do today is front suspension. So this stuff is old, crusty, rusty, paint's falling off. We gotta tear this completely apart. I got new wheel bearings. I completely spaced buying ball joints, but we got wheel bearings, seals, all that good stuff. We got powder coating to do, we got painting to do, ton of work ahead of us. Let's dive into this, let's check it out real quick, and let's get to work ripping this stuff apart. So this is what we are working with. So, like I said, we got uh, wheel bearings, seals, I got rebuild kits for the calipers. I think I'm gonna go ahead and order up upper and lower ball joints. These things are actually all greasable. It's crazy looking at cars today. There's not a single grease zerk on them. This one's got zerks on both sides, on upper and lower. Each ball joint's got one. Uh, you can see the bottom one there. Every steering shaft has got one. So honestly, these ball joints are in pretty good shape, but I think I'm gonna go price out new ones. If it's not too much, I'll probably order some up. But either way, we're gonna start ripping this stuff apart. Also, I did buy coilovers. They're supposed to be here. Um, this lower control arm is gonna need a little bit of work to get them to work. Once they'll show up, I'll kinda go through and show you what we need to do. Honestly, I'm not even sure if they're gonna work, but we're gonna try to make them work. But either way, let's get after taking this stuff apart. Let's completely strip these apart, get them cleaned up. I'll probably go through and powder coat the arms. We gotta swap wheel bearings, all sorts of fun work today. All right guys, we got these all torn apart. You know they say they don't make them like they used to. That holds true. These things are completely, I didn't have a single seize bolt. These are kind of a different setup here. You know, a lot of control arms have a bushing in them. This is like a threaded uh, axle or threaded shaft here. It's got threads on the inside and then threads in the actual arm. And then it's all grease. So. There's no bushings that wear out. So I don't know why they ever switch from this. You guys have seen on my channel at least, every about every Toyota I tear apart, the bolt sees in the lower control arm bushings and you end up spending a full day trying to cut those out. No issues at all here. So only issue I found is something's going on with this rotor here. You can see it's uh, no longer connected to the hub. I guess we'll see once we tear it apart what's going on there. I do have new rotors. So next on the list, we got to tear these apart pull this cap off, get the hub off, wheel bearings, we'll swap those out, um, figure out what we're doing with the hub and the spindle and everything as far as paint or powder coat and get these all this other stuff ready for paint and powder coat.
Well, we got this tore apart and I guess we got a two piece rotor now. Somehow that thing came apart. So good thing I ordered up new ones. So now we just gotta get the other spindle apart and start cleaning and sandblasting this stuff. So I'll probably powder coat that, that, the spindle. This really, I mean, the only part that we need to paint is this. So I might just brush on some pour 15 here. It was just so much masking and a lot of work because obviously we can't coat this uh, flange at all. We want that bare. So that's probably what I'll do is clean this up and just do pour 15 on that little area there. All right guys, we are all cleaned up. We're gonna start our sandblasting on all this stuff here. Uh, these caps I'll probably leave. I'm not gonna bother trying to coat those, but everything else we are going to sandblast and powder coat. Also, I got the coilovers in. So these are actually QA1 coilovers for like a 1969 Camaro. Uh, you can see it's a two and a half inch spring on the bottom neck down for the coilover. And then the top is the same as the factory Toyota, which is three and a half. So these actually are an eight inch spring, factory uh, spring right there. That's about 13 inches. So it's about five inches lower. Yeah, it does sit a little higher because it mounts on the shock itself and not on the control arm. But when I stick this thing in here, it, it seriously looks like it's gonna fit perfect. The spring right now is seated on the top. The shock is seated on the you know the top of the mount there and everything looks like it's going to be pretty work pretty good it's kind of hard to know with everything torn apart right now i've actually never seen anybody actually use these i've seen people use these shocks not the qa ones but the camaro shocks with different lowering springs on these trucks but never the qa one so i'm kind of the guinea pig if this works out this is going to be a literally a bolt almost a bolt-in solution for coilovers the only thing we need to do is mess around with this lower mount. So they both use a T-bar. It's really close to fitting. Let me flip it over and show you guys. It's just the the T-bar on this one's just too wide. You can see. So what I'm actually thinking I'm gonna do is cut this all the way off and put a plate right on the bottom. That's actually gonna lower it probably another three quarters of an inch maybe. And then I'll cut my hole in it here and make my own mount for the bottom. So it'll actually be lowered a little bit more. So that's really the only thing we need to do to the control arms. And everything else looks like it's gonna work. But like I said, hard to know with everything tore apart. So let's get to work with sandblasting, powder coating, and we can get this thing back together and see if the QA1s are gonna work on here.
All right guys, I got a bunch of this stuff powder coated. Now, I know what you're thinking. What are you doing with the brown? This is actually kind of like a bronze color, which I'm going to kind of use this as the theme just because I think it would really look cool. It kind of goes with, honestly, the rust on the truck, but I really do love this color. So we're gonna do some accents in the engine bay with this. I'm gonna do the upper and lower control arms. I still have to do my work on the lower control arms. And then as far as the rear uh, four link or three link stuff, I'm gonna do with the link arms in this color as well. So give it a cool little accent color. So next thing I'm gonna tackle is these arms. I already got the uh, little cutouts ready um, right here. So we gotta cut these out and cut the middle hole with a hole saw, cut our mounting holes, and then we'll just have to cut the just the very bottom piece off of this like i said just cut that out open it up get that plate welded on there and then we can blast these and powder coat these <laughs> All right, we got this side together, got the shock in on that new plate. Good thing I put this together. What I originally did was just grind this kind of flat with what the arm is. But when you get the shock in here and get it lifted up where it should be, I'm gonna need uh, both hands here. Um, but you can see it's not straight here. You can see there's a gap on this side up here and that side is flush. So I am going to grind this side down about another quarter inch till we get no gap and then I'll tack this plate on and we can do the same on the other side. Look at that guys, everything fits, everything clears, we are in and we are nice and flat on this plate back here. So we are good to go with this side. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, get that ground nice and flat, and then we get these things tacked in place. This makes me so happy, guys. Look at it, everything works, everything clears. As long as it'll go low enough, this is gonna be absolutely freaking perfect. All right, I figured I'd show you guys this real quick. So I'm having a little, little issue here with the mounting point on the bottom. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. Oh yeah, you should be able to see that. So down inside here, you can see the shock body right here and then the edge of the actual cross member right there. And you can see I'm just about at full compression and it is very, very close. This is actually a little bit farther that way. So it's even gonna be closer than that. So what I decided to do is move this shock mount in. So I got these two plates. You can see this is offset about three quarters of an inch. So that is gonna move the shock in three quarters. So if I can get all this set up, I'll show you guys. It'll probably be, I'll probably have a good, I don't know, half inch of clearance. It'll be somewhere right about there. So you can see a lot more clearance. So I decided instead of just hoping that I never smack that coil over against the cross member, you know, under a big bump or something, I'm just gonna do it right. So I gotta cut these out and I already got this one busted out. We gotta tack those in place and then we can move on, fully weld them in. All right, we got these lower plates uh, tacked back in place. You can see with the offset there, we got a ton more room between that shock body and that cross member. You can see probably close to probably about a half inch of room. So I am happy with that. Let's pull this all apart, 
and fully weld these plates in and then we can do our powder coating. Alright guys, I had to make one last minute change. I had to notch this out for the adjuster here at full compression. When it's all the way down, it was barely hitting that plate. And you know, you smack a big bump, I don't want to be busting that thing off. So that shouldn't affect the strength too much. This is a quarter inch plate, so that is plenty strong. It's, you know, twice as thick as, this is eighth inch, the whole arm is made out of eight so double the thickness i think it'll be just fine so we are looking really good the only other issue i may have is depending on how this thing sits and depending if i want to go lower when it's all the way completely bottomed out this shock body barely touches up in here you can see where it kind of gets narrow right here on both sides also if i do need to go lower i may need to extend this shock this upper shock mount up but i won't know until we get this thing all together so for now, we are done with the lower control arms. Let's sandblast these and finally freaking powder coat these things. check this out so like I said previously this coilover body was hitting uh, the shock tower kind of looking deal up here the actual cross member and I've been trying to find a clever way I tried some square tube I tried some pipe and actually put a bead on the bottom just to get it a little bit bigger nothing was working that great until I grabbed myself a 2 and 5 16 ball and I stuck everything in my press and I just pressed that ball into the cross member here and it opened it up just nice and easy. I got probably, I don't know, a quarter inch of gap on both sides of that shock. So we got plenty of clearance. I figured I'd show you guys a little clever idea. So I'm gonna do the other side with the ball. I'll show you what I'm doing, pressing that thing in. And it just expands those sides a little bit to give me some room and some clearance for that shock body.
All right, we got all the suspension together. Everything is looking good there. Now, next thing on the list is I got to get the bearing races back into these hubs. So I actually have them in the freezer right now. They're getting cold. That shrinks them just a little bit. What I'm going to use to drive those in is I got the old races here. I'm just gonna get up on the belt sander, sand these down a little bit so they actually slide. You can see it's a little bit of a press fit. So I'm gonna sand them down so they slide in there so they don't get stuck. And I'm gonna use the old races to drive in the new ones. All right, we got bearing races in, so we are gonna wait actually to put these on because I sent back all my brakes. I want to upgrade brakes. Uh, I haven't exactly decided what we're doing yet. So we're gonna leave this as is for now until I figure out what calipers I'm using. And obviously the rotors bolt on the back of these spindles here or these hubs. So we can't put these on yet because the rotor goes on the back of the hub here and then the hub goes on to the spindle. So we gotta wait for that. That is where we are leaving off this video. But I am very, very happy with how this thing looks. The colors, I really do like this color. Hope you guys like it. There's going to be a few other accents with this brown as well. I'm thinking a little bit of red maybe, but we'll see. I know the bronze and the red kind of go pretty good together, but we'll figure that out and we got to figure out brakes as well. Well, that's a wrap guys. Very, very excited. Very happy with how this turned out. If you guys want to check out any of this powder coating stuff, like always, the sponsor of today's video is Prismatic Powder. So go check them out, prismaticpowders.com. All the black stuff I did was called Stone Black this brown or bronze color. I think I said it was Alpine Brown before. It's actually called Alpine Bronze. So I'll have that link down below as well. Go check it out, prismaticpowders.com, the best place for all your powder coating needs. Well, that's a wrap, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Go smash that thumbs up button. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.